So that's a good <laughs> nearly half hour spent tackling with air this lunacy. Good morning YouTube. Um, okay, it's, uh, it's a Saturday morning and uh, we have a reappearance of this thing in the sky. Makes a change from rain anyway. Um, so today I'm going to crawl under a car. Unusual for me I know, but today the Weiss car gets a bit of love. This one here. So this is her the Audi A3 convertible. It's a diesel. The spawn of devil. Um, but it needs a bit of an oil change, a uh, filter change. So heading off to Euro car parts and uh, yeah, we'll get that done. Um, now, I must say, because everybody's on about this at the moment, and I never say it, if you find this stuff entertaining and you've stumbled across here by accident, please subscribe. You never know, there'll be a drunken night where you've got nothing else better to do and this may seem quite entertaining to you. So please hit the subscribe, it's down the bottom somewhere, you'll see it. Yeah, okay, let's get the parts. later. Well, as you can see from that little video, it seems to be, um, <laughs> um, I've forgotten how to drive week or day. Let's hope it doesn't go on all week, but yeah, there was um, some interesting driving there, to say the least. Right, let's um, get on with the job in hand. Let's get this thing jacked up in the air. So, we're all jacked up, and first job, get rid of the plastic. Like so, because the oil filter right down there so we've got to take that off in a minute but first thing is get under the car now I've got to get the tools yet but I wanted to show you something because I've worked on the Addis for years and this one seems to be a little different for some reason the the bash pan underneath is metal now every single one I've ever worked on has been plastic um, which isn't uh, which isn't a bad thing metal is a lot stronger obviously but it just seemed a bit weird when I first came across it when I was servicing this car that this was actually metal. But anyway, let's drop it off and then we can drop the oil and from there obviously put the new stuff in. So that's a good <laughs> nearly half hour spent tackling with air this lunacy. So I don't quite get it to be honest. Um, I can understand if uh, the car was in a harsh environment or was uh, taken on a rally stage but to be honest, all that just to protect that seems a bit harsh so if it's on the rally stage I can understand it but somehow I don't think the uh, speed bumps of Cambridge here are going to cause much of a problem for it but there you go that's this car whether that's standard for most diesel 2 litre cars I have no idea but it's an, a great big plate to 
protect that. And the only reason I need to get it off is to get to the sump plug, uh, which is under there somewhere. So the next job is drop the sump plug and drain the oil. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get a camera under there, so you're going to have to trust me that uh, uh, it's a relatively easy job. But uh, yeah, you've got to get right into the car and oh, there it is. Let's turn you around. That is where the sump plug is. And of course, there's a bar straight across in front of it, so the oil goes everywhere, which is hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> out of the engineering, sometimes questionable. There you go, right, let's drop that sump plug, let's drop the oil out, and then we'll get the oil in and um, spend another half hour putting the plate back on. Happy days. So yeah, as you can see, not the best uh, effort in design from Audi. Um, yeah, the sump plug is right up there, which obviously I've dropped now. Uh, but what happens is it hits this bar, travels along and then ends up all over the floor, which is um, hilarious, yeah. But anyway, that's the oil coming out, so we've dropped the engine oil from the bottom there. Now we're going to move it to the top, we're going to take the filter out, which uh, again we're going to get a bit of a mess on, and uh, put the new filter in, put the new oil in, and then uh, put this panel back on again, which is going to be immense amount of fun. But uh, there you go. It's not a hard job. It's just um, a bit of a messy job and a bit of a pain in the backside with all this metal work going on. Um, I still can't figure out if that's true Audi. I think it is. It's got Audi stickers all over it. But it does seem very excessive. Very excessive. Not normal Audi design as I'd see it. But um, yeah, I mean, it does a good job of protection. Don't get me wrong. It just seems a little bit overkill. Anyway, I'm waffling. Let's get on with the uh, the rest of the job. So in true Audi style, most DIY mechanics are not going to have something to fit that. Uh, and this is the bit where I turn to Big Dick. Sorry, King Dick. So um, those of you who have been around a while will remember socket sets like this. Um, this set has the most almighty sockets that you've ever seen and oh, I forget what even chuck size that is but uh, yeah it is massive and it is made by a company called King Dick which is always great entertainment for young mechanics of course. Um, but this is where this little beauty comes in. So this particular socket, oh God they're that rusty I can't even see it, is um, yeah, it's whatever that says. <laughs> um, seven eighths Whitworth, I think, <laughs> something like that. And you could just about get it on there, but obviously it's at an angle, so it's probably best not to. Um, now, lots of people, I guess, are going to take an adjustable spanner to this, or power and mole grips or something like that, and completely round it off. Um, probably not a good idea. I think in modern money, it's a 32mm socket. Um, I've got a 32mm socket, but it's a long reach, and it doesn't go in there. But try and get yourself something in there that's relatively tight. It doesn't take a lot to turn them. And I'm going to try and do this one-handed, just to tell you. Um, so basically, yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Um, yeah, basically you're going to have to take my word for it. Get yourself a relatively tight socket on there. So around about 32, I think, will do it. Morning! Yeah. Noisy vans. Um, and then gently work it away. I'm going to get myself a knuckle on there and I'm going to use two hands because I don't want to mess this up. So, um, catch you in a sec. So there you go, I've got myself a knuckle joint in there and I've got my socket on. And let me just wedge you in there. Let's see how this works. This will be the worst camera angle photography ever in the world. So two handles on, two hands on it and nice and gently, like that. There you go. Slowly comes out. And it will feel quite stiff because it seems to swell a little bit this plastic but that's all it is basically there you go I'll nip that off that's all you got to do and the last bit you get your hand in there I'm gonna get myself a rag first bear with me Ooh, let's lay you on there again get myself a rag just to take some of the mess away and you get your hand in there Spin it off, and when you draw it out, ooh, which is easier said than done, everything's so tight on this, you have a dirty oil filter. <laughs> there you go, nearly got it in the camera. So there you go, one oil filter, looking black and gunky like all diesels do. Right, let's get the new one in there, tighten everything up, get some oil in it, 
and then change the air filter. So today's brew and delights from Euro Car Parts are as follows. Crossland filters, air filter, oil filter and some Shell Helix. Um, like this stuff, used it before, it's a special offer, only about £25, there's a discount on top of that, so good stuff. And it, uh, it is for diesel and gasoline engines for those people in the US of A. Hmm. Or gas engines as call them. How a liquid can be a gas, I have no idea. So, basically, blue filter, as you can see, a little peg on the bottom, little peg, goes down the bottom there, and then your cap goes back on again. But I'm going to need two hands for this, so you're going to have to take my word that it all fits together again. So uh, there is the new filter, ready to go in. Um, do yourself a favour, in the kit you will see this O-ring. Put that on. Um, because basically those O-rings do deteriorate, all the O-rings don't work well together over time. So you get a new O-ring with the crossing filters, put it in. So all you do is basically clip back to there like that. And as I say, that drops down. Actually, I'll show you before. There's a ceiling ring on the bottom there as well. Always check that's on it. Should be, but always check. So basically, that all drops back in there. Nice and easy, of course, because Audi give you so much room to work on. And bang, it is in. From there, you've got to screw your cap back on. And be very careful when you're doing this. Do not force it. If it feels like it goes tight at any point in the first two or three threads, back it off, try again, because you've got it cross-threaded. Um, you'll hear or feel some resistance when you get to the o-ring as I'm getting now and you can't really see this because my hands in the way but make sure that's nice and straight you've got it on and it's not binding up in the first say two or three turns because if it is you're definitely cross-threaded and if you cross-thread it it's a plastic thread you would lacquer it and I would say to get a new one of those in there is going to be quite a job so be very careful right let's get that screwed up bolted up We'll then get some oil put in this, obviously put the bung back on the bottom first, get the fresh oil in and then get onto the air filter. Okay, this is going to take, make good uh, cinemography, is that a word even? I don't know, it is now. So the bolt's back in. Now, as I say with these bolts, I've said it every time, they are alloy on the sumps of these. Most of the new cars now are alloy, or, or aluminium, not aluminium. <laughs> Uh, so my word of advice is do not hang off these, you don't need a breaker bar and a 19mm socket. Get yourself a 19mm spanner and just crack it up. Give it a little tap with your palm of your hand just to make sure it's snug. But do not go crazy because if you break that, all this sump has to come off. You don't want that. Alright, quickly tighten it up, oil in. Fun this isn't it? So a little top tip for you. The best tools are the old school tools used by mechanics through the decades when we didn't have enough money to buy our own tools. Yeah, that made no sense. Um, yes, plastic pop bottles. They may be the scorn of the devil, they may uh, harm the environment, they may clog up the shores of Malaysia, but if you want to put oil in your engine, they're brilliant. There you go, cut yourself a top off a bottle, use that as a funnel, best funnels you can get. Don't worry about buying yourself a funnel, these work perfectly fine. Now, of course, when you're filling the oil up, Pour three quarters of the bottle in. Um, I usually buy five litres. Be careful when you're buying oil because some of it looks like a good deal but it's only four litres and you'll end up buying a litre for about £23. So the Shell Helix I've got is a five litre can. And what I always do is basically put around about three quarters of it in um, or start around half, go to three quarters and then just pull the dipstick. And again, not easy when you've got a camera in your hand but basically just keep your eye on your dipstick. Your dipstick is your guide. Now bear in mind your car is jacked up slightly, so it's probably not level. My drive slopes, so when I jack the front end up, it does actually level the car off, which is really handy. But now get your dipstick in there, pull it out, and as you can see at the moment, we're just about halfway. Now bear in mind I haven't started the car up yet, so when I start the car up, it's gonna get the oil around the oil ways, it's gonna put it into the filter ca uh, canister, so that's gonna drop, but, Get it on probably about the top mark, start your car up, let it run for a few seconds, then stop it, wait again, another couple of minutes just for the oil to settle down, check your oil again, and then you're almost ready to go. Of course, after a few hours of actually running the car, check it again, make sure everything's okay, because the oil level will change, but it will level off within you know, a few hours at least. But uh, there you go, that's almost the oil change. So I'm going to get the oil up to the level I'm happy, uh, and then we'll get the air filter off, get the rag out of the way, 
air filter off and I'll show you quickly how to change the air filter. It's really easy, shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. So the next job is the oil filter. Now, just a word of advice, um, take it if you want, ignore it if you think it's rubbish. On this particular air filter I've got Phillips screws. Always get yourself a screwdriver that fits nicely into the Phillips screw. Okay, this one you can see, there's very little movement when I turn it. If I use a slightly smaller one, okay, there is a lot of movement. If you've got a lot of movement, your screwdriver doesn't fit. Simple as. So try and get yourself a selection of screwdrivers that have different size heads. Because if you round these off, it's a real pain in the backside. Now these are metal screws into plastic, shouldn't be too much of a problem, but get into the habit of it. So on this one, um, you've got some screws in tricky places. Down the back there, round the back there. The screws on this, I know for a fact, fall out. Some of them are captive and don't move, but on this particular one, they fall out. So, be very careful. I would say, if you can take them out, take them out. Um, and in this case, a magnet is your friend. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to actually get that metal clip off there and get your connection off for the mass sensor. The mass sensor is easy. You've got a peg on the side there. Give it a pull. And one hand it doesn't work like that it will click as you pull that up and it just pops off like that these clips yeah they're a different matter um, they are strong awkward and ping off very very easily so I'm going to need two hands for that be very careful with them they are horrible and uh, if you slip with a pair of pliers or mole grips or whatever you're going to use I tend to use mole grips it's going to hurt you Okay, so be very careful with those, they are very strong. But that's got to come off. That pipe there just pulls out. Whoop, he says. Like that. So, connection comes off. Pipe pulls out. Get those out of the way. You don't need them for now. Screws out. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that horrible clip off. And when I've done that, you can join me back. Join me back. Join me on the back. We'll be back. Okay, so all the screws are out. The clip is off and it's up there. I use a pair of these. They're expanding grips. Um, Nipex, apparently. They've always been helpful, but they're quite good. Um, it came off quite easily this time. Didn't hurt myself for a change. So all the screws are out. Um, I was wrong. They are captive on these ones. I thought they dropped out. Maybe it's uh, another one I was working on. I don't know. But the screws are all out. Uh, basically, you pop the top off like so. Stick out the one side, and that's your air filter. And you're going to join me now to see how filthy this was. Um, I do change them every year. Do a service every year, every six months on my Audi. But let's see what a year's worth of crap looks like. Huh. There you go. Almost clean. But for the sake of whatever these are, a fiver, yeah, you take them out, you throw them away. So I'm just going to hoover that mess out in there because there's a few leaves and a bit of debris and just make it nice and tidy. A little bit of sand in there as well. Must have been to the coast at some point. Hmm. So I'll get that hoovered out, get it tidied up and stick a new one in. So the new air filters back in, just make sure to get these edges tight and sat just down there because if you pinch it you're not going to get a good seal and you're going to make a mess of your air filter so that's a new one in and now we're just going to reverse what we did originally by putting the cover back on putting the screws down putting the pipe back on and then all we've got to do then is get the engine cover on and then get that bottom cover on that massive lump of metal just there Right, let's get on with it. Uh, just as a supplemental, why I had the cover off, um, this here is the math sensor. There's two screws there if you want to take it out completely. But what I get into the habit of doing is um, there's an element in there. It's just a thin bit of wire and it picks up um, a CO2 signal or something like that. don't know exactly how they work, but um, they work out your uh, fuel ratio um, from the air travelling over them. But they can get a little bit crappy and they can get some dust and uh, particles on them. So what I do is just spray a load of electrical spray in there. Don't use anything too harsh because you'll damage it. But get yourself some electrical spray, let's call clean the spray. Give it a good dosing and then I blew it off with a, uh, an air duster in a can. And um, hopefully if there was any debris on there, that should then sort it out. Um, if your math goes wrong, you'll know because your engine will run like absolute poo. 
um, but a little bit of dust or dirt on there will affect your fuel ratios but won't make a huge difference just maybe you know, cut down your fuel economy a little bit so get into the habit of just cleaning your muff as well don't be scared of it it is an electronic component but um, say if you use electrical spray and um, just an air duster um, it'll be fine you won't damage it Okay, now the arduous task of putting the plate back on. I'm not going to take you for every step of this because it will be as boring as hell, but for reference, that's all the bolts that AOD think this plate should have. Um, for what reason, I have no idea. But do yourself a favour, stick some copper grease on them before you put them back in because that will make it a lot easier to get them out when you have to do this again. So, <laughs> I've now got to balance that on my knee and my head and my chin and my chest and get it back up into that area up there. There's two two bolts at the back that it kind of slides onto and then start bolting it from the front and moving backwards. Um, yeah, I'll join you in half hour, which will be a couple of seconds in video time. Okay, my work is done. The panel is back on. And what joy that is to get back on again. But uh, yeah, there you go. If you've got one of these, my advice is don't tighten up any screws. Put them all in loose because they do move around a lot, these, these panels. And uh, if you tighten a couple of bolts up, it makes it quite difficult to get uh, the rest of them in. But there you go. We are ready for uh, whatever the next year brings. So I hope the video has been useful. Again, leave likes, leave comments, and please subscribe. Catch you later. So the very last bit. Now if I turn this, the uh, ignition on, what you're going to see is, is it's coming at the service in 6,300 miles. So here's how you reset it. Turn it on again, pull that out, and it should reset itself. Let go, pull it out again. And there you go. Ta -da. So you pull it out, let it go, pull it out again, let it go, and now it should give me the full service interval. So just to recap, so turn your ignition on, your right hand side button, pull it out until you get that service in, in my case 14,400 miles. As soon as that comes up, let it go, pull it out again, and then it will come up with dashes rather than miles and anything else. And that is your service light reset. So now it should alert me in another 12 months time that it needs to be done. So I hope this has been useful. Um, we're now, um, I think, going into car cleaning mode because by the looks of it, yeah, the boy's tinkering and just about to clean his car. <laughs> Hello, boy. No, he's miles away. Doesn't want to be on video today. What are you doing? Checks. Checks. Okay, he's doing checks. Okay, so that is it. I am now going to get myself cleaned up. I am now going to um, sort out the rest of the day because the sky is looking okay. I think the boy's going to Skegness today, so wow, we may even join him. Who knows? But that is the oil change on an Audi A3. Uh, this particular model is 2009. It's just the, the facelift model on the A3 8P range. Uh, like I said, the only weird thing is that metal cover under the engine. Never seen one of those before. Everything's been plastic on the Audi that I've worked on before and relatively easy to get off. Mine certainly is on the on the S3. But there you go, that is a quick oil change. Hopefully it's been useful. Again, like, subscribe, leave comments and more videos to come. Have a great day.